Hey guys, Simply Cola here, and it is Anime Wednesday. And today we're going to be talking about um, a anime called Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody. Something like that. <laughs> it's a very long name. It seems extremely unnecessary. But just a quick review. Oh, and if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be amazing. Check out my other social links below if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Pinterest. Don't do Twitter. Never figured it out. Don't know how to use it. I can't talk in such few words. If you need evidence of that, please check out the description box because I do have a full review up on this anime as well. I just like to do the quick little video too just for people that do not like to read. I am sometimes one of those people. So <laughs> on to the review. This is a show about a guy who is like a game developer sort of person and he is going to work over the weekend because he has nothing better to do with his time and he also is aware of it which is kind of cool that he is aware that he's kind of a loser so <laughs> he goes to work to do a death march and stay up all night and work on the game to try and finish it by this deadline and he falls asleep under his desk and he wakes up into the game universe except he's confused because it's not all 100% his game but it is kind of his game it's not a terribly original concept and he could just be dreaming it all to be honest because he never wakes up and it's all just you know kind of generic anyway but we never will know well at least not now because this is only season one anyway in the first time where he enters the world he gives himself the name Sato which is his like character name and he's kind of mad that he gave it to him himself but he looks at himself in a mirror and he is his young high school age he is not the 30 year oldish guy that was working in the world so he's kind of confused obviously as to why he's there and he kind of just goes on adventures and of course of course is massively stacked and um what do they call it overpowered <laughs> of course when he enters the world he's able to use this massive like bomb diving meteor attack and it basically kills like a gajillion monsters and like bad guys so he becomes like super overpowered man and he can do anything he's got all these magical aspects the show is interesting because it does have like a it incorporates the game elements quite often kind of similar to overlord if you've seen that one where they come up and he's got the menus and you can choose between the menus and he can well a little less like overlord overlord mentions game mechanics a lot but this game doesn't necessarily mention game mechanics but it does actually show you like the menus and stuff that he can pull up and he can choose which powers to level up and level down so i guess not really like that Anyway, I can't exactly figure out if the other people in the world also pull up their own menus or not. It's never explicitly stated, but he does go on his first journey into a town where they can pull up his stats. So I'm not sure if everyone else works that way or not, but he definitely does. And that I do think is interesting. They kept that part of the game in it, which I guess is more similar to Sword Art Online if you've seen that one. Yeah, so that's interesting, I guess. I don't know why I thought it was interesting, but I did. I guess because they're not just totally immersing you in the world they want you to understand that it is still like a game but yeah so moving on the other thing I found interesting is the character himself I think he is actually the best part of the show everyone else in the show is totally vapid and one-dimensional in my opinion if you disagree you can let me know in the comments but all the like women harem characters are just totally lame I think they're all just basically generalized women that are part of a harem that he is kind of in charge of which does happen he does kind of gain a harem and most of them are tiny little girls which is a little weird and i've seen a lot of reviews that are very against it and talk about how he's like a bad guy and all this kind of stuff but i, I don't see it that way because he he would never do anything like that he's not like a little leader or anything he is totally in charge of himself if that's a weird 
That sounds weird to say, but you know like in romance anime, sometimes the guys just get so overwhelmed they can't control themselves anymore. He's not like that. He's very in control of himself and his emotions. He is a 30 year old dude trapped in a high school body. So he is still has his full mental capacities. He's not just like a little kid that doesn't understand things, which I did think also was another interesting part of the show. And a lot of like in the show, he actually says he would never do anything with any of the girls because he, he's like their guardian which I appreciate that they put that in the show. And yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. I mean, really short review for you guys because I don't want to get like too much into the show. Not, there really isn't that much really to get into the show. It doesn't have like any overarching majorly interesting themes or anything like that. I mean, he is the main interesting character just because of his kindness. It's interesting that he's older, but trapped in a child's body and all that kind of stuff. That part is interesting, but the rest of the characters, the actual world. It's meh, it's meh, meh. I hope that he does find something more interesting along his way if the show continues. I don't know if it will or not, but we'll see. So if you do like animes that have action, fantasy, in-game sort of scenarios, and a little bit of harem, then I would check this out. If you don't like that kind of anime, then I wouldn't check it out. It's not for you. If you guys are interested, check out my other reviews of my top favorite animes and it's got my favorite on there, Konospa. So check it out, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!